in this video I'm going to share one of the ways I determine what colours I'm going to use in a painting. I'll use this rose painting that I finished a few weeks ago to demonstrate. I get asked questions all the time about how I choose the colours that I use in my paintings. So I want to talk about that in this video. I often work from reference photos when I'm painting and sometimes it's difficult to work out what colours to use. Working from reference photos isn't ideal because the camera can't pick up what the eye sees, particularly in the shadows. But because I make online tutorials, I need to use photos so that my students can see what I'm seeing. I'm going to show you something that I do that helps me determine what the colours are that I'm seeing. Here's the photo that I took of the rose and used for reference. When I looked at the photo, I could see the overall colour of the rose. I could see the pink edges and I could see the different greens on the stem and on the leaves. But then I thought, what is that colour down there in the shadows? Is it a grey? Is it a green? Or is it a type of brown? It's really hard to tell. I thought it might have been a grey. One simple thing that you can do to help work out what a particular colour is, is to take a piece of paper and punch a small hole in it and place it over your photo. Then you can isolate the area that you're not sure of. That helps you to see the colour more clearly when it's not surrounded by other colours. Here's another thing that I do when I'm not sure. I open the photo in Photoshop and I paste it onto another file. Then I use the eyedropper tool to select the colours that I'm not sure of and I place little swatches of each colour around the edge of the photo with a line pointing to the area where I selected the colour. Here in Photoshop I use the eyedropper tool and I select an area on the rows. Then I go to another file and I choose the paint bucket tool to make my sample. Then I drag that rectangle onto my reference photo and I use the line tool to point to where I selected the colour. Now I can see the colours more clearly, but that's given me 10 different colours that I've selected from different areas of the rose, and that's too many. If you've been watching this channel, you'll know that I now try to limit the palette that I use for each painting. So I need to look at those sample colours and work out what I need and what I don't need, and what colours I can use from my paint kit to mix the colours that I do need. I ended up choosing just four colours. Indian yellow, transparent yellow, French ultramarine and permanent rose. I felt that the photo had washed out the colour of the rose. The rose is a really pale yellow, whereas on the photo it looks more of an off-white or cream colour. So for the overall colour of the rose I chose Indian yellow. I thought that I could thin it right down so that it was really pale, showing just a hint of colour. For the pink edges, I thought permanent rose would be a good choice. So they're my two main colours. Now I need a green. Actually, I need two different greens. There's the green on the leaves and there's a much brighter green at the top of the stem. I rarely use pre-mixed greens these days, so I needed a blue. I love French ultramarine, so I grabbed that. It's a warm blue and when I mix it with the warm Indian yellow that I'd already chosen, I know that was going to give me an earthy muted green that I thought I could use on the leaves. I knew that wouldn't work on the bright green at the top of the stem, so I realised I needed a cool yellow as well. If I mix a cool yellow with French ultramarine, that should give me a brighter green that I need for that area. So I got out some transparent yellow, which is a cool yellow. I had four colours then and I didn't want to get any more out. So I got out some scrap watercolour paper and I did a bit of mixing with those four colours. Here's my Indian yellow. Indian yellow is a warm yellow. So I thought if I water that down quite a lot, I'll be able to use it really pale. I got one of my failed paintings and I tried the colours out on the back of it. 
that's Indian yellow watered down and I thought that that would be the main colour that I'll wash all over the rose. For the pink edges I thought I'd keep it simple and I'd just use permanent rose. Permanent rose is a cool red. When I painted I thought what I'd do is work the pink on the wet paper so it would blend into the pale yellow. Then I looked at the shadow areas on the pink parts of the rose and I could see I needed to make a darker colour. So instead of getting out another colour, something like permanent magenta or something like that, I thought let's see if I can mix a colour that's similar to that with the colours that I've chosen. So here I've mixed some French ultramarine into the permanent rose. I tried that colour out, but straight away I could see that it was probably not going to work. So then I mixed a bit more French ultramarine into the mixture and I tried that to see if that would help. I probably could have used that, but I thought, no, I can do better than that. So then I got a bit of transparent yellow and I mixed that into it. A bit more blue. more of the yellow and a bit more of the permanent rose. I just kept going back through those three colours until I got something that I thought resembled the swatch that I'd made in Photoshop. I tried it out on my scrap piece of paper and I was happy with that. Before I forgot what colours I'd mixed together, I thought I'd grab my pencil and write them down. Then I needed a shadow colour, or the darker colours that I could see on the petals. I had three different colour swatches that I took from the shadows of the reference photo, and they were earthy, sandy greens and browns. As I mentioned in my temperature bias video from a few weeks ago, when mixing a green, if you want an earthy, natural looking green, mix two warm colours. So I will use Indian yellow, which is a warm colour, with the French ultramarine, which is also a warm colour. And that gives me that beautiful earthy green. This colour was similar to my colour swatch, so I thought I'll use that in the shadow areas of the petals. I also thought if I wanted to change it slightly, I could add a bit of permanent rose to it. Not a lot, just a tiny bit of it. So if I wanted to vary the shadow colour slightly, all I have to do is add a bit of permanent rose to the mixture. And again, I took my pencil and I wrote down the colours I used and how I mixed them together. Then I needed a darker green for the leaves. So again, I used French ultramarine and I mixed it with Indian yellow. I knew that would give me an earthy green, but I needed it to be darker than the shadow that I would use on the flower. So I used a bit more pigment. I tried it out on my paper, but straight away I could see it wasn't going to be dark enough. So I put a bit more of the French ultramarine into the mixture. I felt that was better. With the leaves, I wasn't trying to match my colour with the colour of the leaves on the reference photo. I knew I wanted an earthy green, which is why I used the warm colours. I also didn't want to fuss with the leaves too much when I painted them. The flower was going to be my focus and the leaves I wanted to be simple. I didn't want the colour to be too dark either because I didn't want to take the focus away from the flower. Now apart from the green for the leaves, I also needed a bright green. On the top of the stem near the flower you can see that green. It's also on the sepals. That's where my cool yellow comes into play. This is transparent yellow which is cool. And when I mix that with my French ultramarine, I should get a much brighter green. And that's the colour I'll use up the top there. Let's have a look at that on the paper. It's not quite the same as that bright green on the reference photo, but it's close enough. That's the colour I will use on the top of the stem. 
And again, to remind myself when I was painting the rose, I wrote in the colours that I used. I needed one more colour, which was the ready brown colour that's on the stem. For that, I started with permanent rose and I mixed some of the Indian yellow into it. Now that's going to be too orange, so I'll need to mix a bit of the French ultramarine into that. I'll only put a small amount in just to start with. I don't want to put too much in at once. Let's have a look at that. And so I don't forget what I did. That's permanent rose, Indian yellow and a touch of French ultramarine. Okay, so I managed to mix the colours that I needed from the four colours that I chose. They weren't exactly like the colours that I saw on the reference photo, but they were similar. Instead of reaching for other pigments like I would have done not so long ago, I made do with what I had chosen. Now I'll show you how I painted a few different areas of the rose and how I put those colours to use. I will make a full length tutorial of how I painted this rose. I'll be posting it on my Patreon site early next year. So join us there if you are wanting to improve your watercolour painting skills. I wanted a bit of colour behind the leaves. So I mixed the green that I'd be using on the leaves. That was a mixture of the Indian yellow and French ultramarine. I kept adding the French ultramarine until I was happy with the colour. I also got a puddle of Indian yellow ready for myself. I was going to wash this over the rose as well. I transferred my line drawing onto the paper and then I wet it all over with some water. Then when it was completely wet, I got some of the green that I mixed and I painted that over the leaves. I lifted the board off the table while I was doing that so that the paint would flow up towards the top of the paper. And I loosely painted that over the top of the leaf area. Some of it drifted up into the flower, but that was okay. And then I got some of the Indian yellow and I washed that over the rose really loosely as well. And I tilted the board while I did that too. I allowed it to dry and then I decided to paint in all the shadow areas that I could see on the petals. For that I had mixed Indian yellow with a touch of French ultramarine. I referred back to my colour sample and I remembered I put a bit of permanent rose into it as well, so I thought I might do that again. So I've got a small amount of permanent rose, not too much, just add it gradually. And then I started to paint that colour onto the shadow areas. Here I put the paint on and then I softened the edge at the top there with my damp brush. Sometimes I worked on wet paper when I wanted soft edges all around and other times I worked on the dry paper. So there I'm on wet paper. Here I'm on wet paper as well. The colour varied slightly. Sometimes it will vary when I pick it up in a different spot in the puddle that I've made. Other times I might have put a bit more French ultramarine in it to vary the mixture slightly. So here you can see the same mixture has got lots of different variations in it. Here I've put quite a bit of the French ultramarine in it to cool it down. Once I had painted most of the shadows on, I wet the paper here with water and I'm going to paint on the permanent rose. 
I wet the background as well as the petal so that the paint would flow off into the background. Here I'm lifting the board off the table so that the paint would flow up to the top. I did the same on this other side. I allowed that to dry and then I wet this particular petal that I'm painting on here with some water. I kept the water within the edges of the petal. I've got my little zero brush now and I've got permanent rose, but you can see it's quite a lot darker. Just dabbing the paint on there. I'm going to leave a lost edge on the outer edge of this petal, so I'm trying to keep the paint away from that edge. I came back over onto this petal then and I wet it with water, not the background, just the petal. And I painted the darker permanent rose on there as well. And again, I left a lost edge on the outer edge there. I've wet the front petal here with some water and I'm painting on some pale permanent rose. Before the paper dries, I get some more permanent rose, but I've got a lot more pigment on my brush now. I'm using my little zero brush to paint it on. Run it along the top edge as well. Then I needed the shadow colour for the pink part of the petals. So I mixed together the permanent rose and French ultramarine, and then I put a touch of the transparent yellow into it. I could see that wasn't going to be dark enough, so I went back into the blue and back into the permanent rose. I put a bit more pigment into my mixture and then the transparent yellow. And then I tried it out next to my colour sample. Then I wet the area where I wanted to paint that colour with some water and I painted it onto the wet paper. So that gave me my shadow done in there. I also needed it on the edge of the front of the petal, so I wet this area with water and I put a bit there as well. And I needed some over here as well, and that's on wet paper. Once I got most of the flower painted in, I needed to start painting in the stem. So for that, I used my transparent yellow, which is a cool yellow, and I mixed it with French ultramarine to make a bright green. Remember when I mixed the warm yellow, Indian yellow, with the French ultramarine, it gave me that really dull green. This one's a lot brighter because I'm using the cool yellow. I've wet the stem with some water and I've got that green mixture now. The reason I wet it is because I've got to transition the green into brown later and I don't want a hard edge where the paint stops. I'm not ready to paint my brown yet. I haven't mixed it up but I can stop the green and give myself a soft edge so that I can join up with it later. So here I've taken the paint out of my brush. I'm softening that edge at the bottom and that will allow me to blend the brown that I mix into the green. Now I need a darker version of that, so I'll add a bit more of the French ultramarine into it. And I'll run that down the right-hand side to create a shadow there. The lighter green paint is still wet, so the two colours blend into one another. Gives me that soft edge there. Then I thought I could go even darker, so I got my smaller brush, my Zero, and I picked up some French Ultramarine on its own, and I painted that down the right-hand side while it was wet. So 
So that's deep into that shadow down there. I painted in the sepals with the lighter green and I used the darker green on the shadow side while it was wet. That edge at the top I'll have to soften with my damp brush. So I'll take the paint out of my brush in a moment and then I'll soften it before it dries. Just here I run my damp brush over that hard edge to soften it. After I did all that work with the bright green I needed a brown for the stem. So I remembered that I mixed permanent rose with the warm yellow, Indian yellow. That gave me a bright orange. And then I mixed some of the French ultramarine into that. And here's where I'll blend the green of the stem with the brown. To do that, I work on wet paper again, and I wet into the green as well. And then when I put the paint on where the brown meets the green, I should have a soft edge where the two colors meet. And I took that down to the top of the leaf there. I mixed a bit more of the French ultramarine into my mixture to deepen the colour and I ran that down the right hand side to create a shadow there as well. Down the bottom of the stem I faded that colour away quite a lot so that it was just a hint of colour there. With the leaves I tried not to fuss with them. I didn't really follow the reference photo with them. They had the underwash from the background on them, so I wet them with water and then I used the same green mixture with a bit more of the French ultramarine in it and I darkened around the edges. I left some lost edges on these leaves as well. The green was a mixture of Indian yellow and French ultramarine. I painted more than one layer. I deepened the colour in a few areas by adding more French ultramarine into my mixture, always working on the wet paper. And to repeat the light green that I used at the top of the stem and on the sepals, I glazed some of that colour here and there on the leaves, just so that that top of the stem there wasn't the only place that you could see that colour. If I've used a particular colour in one spot on the painting, I often try to repeat that colour somewhere else on the painting. I left a lost edge here before, but I didn't like it. I think I needed an edge there. So I got a bit of the Indian yellow watered down and I glazed that over the top there. But then I could see I needed to put it elsewhere on the flower, not just on that petal. So I started to add a bit more of that colour on the other petals as well. It's very pale though. And because permanent rose is only on the flower, I decided to wet the stem and paint a bit of it over the stem as well. When I was happy with it, I took the washi tape off from around the edges and then I cut it from the board. And there it is there, finished. I hope there were some useful tips in there for you. Get to know your paint colours and how they mix and interact with each other. And remember that it's always good practice to try to limit the amount of colours that you use on your painting. As always, please give this video a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel 
happy painting and I'll see you next week. Hi everyone. In, do I need to say hi everyone? I often work from reference photos when I'm painting. <coughs> I thought that I could thin it right down so that I knew, yeah, I knew that was going to make an earthy beauty green. I knew. Start again. Where should I start from? Get to know your paint colours and how they mix and interact which which each other which each other. Is that alright? Or not? <laughs>